Aloha, my friends. We are towards the end of Unit 7. We're almost there. And today we're going to talk about finding the inverses and solving literal equations. So we're still solving rational equations. And if you remember last lesson, we talked about how to solve rational equations. And we had two methods. One of them was cross multiplying and the other one was using a least common denominator, which in that second method, that least common denominator was also used in adding and subtracting our rational. So everything is kind of um, being repeated here, even inverses, because as you hopefully recall, we have already found inverses of multiple functions throughout this school year. So we're going to do it obviously another time here with rationals. So remember when you're finding the inverse of a function, you're solving, um, for X, right? You're, you're kind of switching the X and Y and solving for that new Y. So you're undoing the function they say. So as I said, the first step in finding the inverse of a function is to switch the X and the Y. And remember F of X is another way of saying Y. So this is really Y equals three X minus two over X plus seven. So if I switch the X and Y, I now have X equals three Y minus two over y plus seven. So for here, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by that y plus seven, which is really the same thing as cross multiplying, because if I put x over one and cross multiply, that's exactly what I'd be doing. My numerator obviously won't change because I'm just multiplying it by that one. So multiplying both sides by that denominator of y plus seven, y plus seven, we get, I'm going to come up here, we get x times y plus seven is equal to three y minus two. And so we need to remember our goal here. Our goal is to solve for this new y. And so in order to do that, we obviously want everything with a y um, in it, every term with a y in it on one side of the equal sign and everything that doesn't have a y in it on the other side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute my x. So that's gonna get me x y plus seven x is equal to three y minus two. And now I can better see how to put y's on one side and everything else on the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract that three y to the left, giving me x y minus three y, and then I'll subtract the seven x from the, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna subtract the three y from the right over to the left and then subtract the seven x from the left and move it over to the right, giving me a negative seven x minus two. And so now um, what I can do is I can factor out a y, leaving me with x minus three, and now it's very easy for me to get that y by itself because y is being multiplied to x minus 3. So to undo that, we're obviously going to divide by that x minus 3. So y is equal to negative 7x minus 2 divided by x minus 3. And good practice to write it in that inverse notation. The inverse of the function is negative 7x minus 2 over x minus 3 final answer. All right. So see, this is really nothing new. Um, you're just working with a new function. You're working with these rationals. So typically, um, this is going to be your process in finding the inverse. It's kind of always going to involve like a, a multiplying, um, and some distributing and dividing and all that stuff. So the other part of our notes today is solving literal equations. So again, we're solving a rational. It's just not going to have um, numbers. We're not going to get some variable equaling a number. We're going to be solving for a variable in terms of other variables. So we're going to have problems with multiple variables and not just an X or not just a Y or not just a B or whatever. So Let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, like I said, we're going to be using those same methods, um, cross multiplication and least common denominator. And as you can see in examples two and three, cross multiplication is probably going to be our best bet. In examples four and five, LCD will probably be our best bet. So in example two, I'm definitely going to cross multiply. And my goal here is to solve for the X. Notice I also have a Y and a Z in this problem. So when, when I cross multiply, I'm getting 2X times 3Z equaling Z times Y plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and come like uh, multiply out as much as I can distribute. So that would be 6 times X times Z 
equals z y plus z my goal is to solve for x and so what i want to do is i want to get every every term with an x in it on one side and all the other terms on the other side and this is exactly how it's set up for me right now um, on the left i do have a term with an x in it and then on the right there's nothing with x in it so that's great so to get that x by itself it's being multiplied to a six and it's being multiplied to a z so what i can do is I can actually divide this by 6z, cancel, cancel, and do the same thing on the other side, 6z. So I do get x to be this zy plus z over 6z. Now, I'm actually going to work a little bit backwards because I'm noticing something here. I'm noticing that I have some z's at the top and some z's at the bottom, but the way that it's written out right now, I can't cross out this or I can't cross out that because of that addition sign. But if I left it as like that undistributed way, like this, I could then cancel out these two z's because at the top, z is being multiplied to something and at the bottom, z is also being multiplied to something. There's no um, adding like outside of the parentheses. So then that would just get me x to be y plus 1 over 6, which is our final answer. Okay. Make this smaller. You know, I write large. All right, there you go. I'm going to do the same thing for 3. This time we're solving for C. The way that it's set up, it would be best to cross multiply. So I'm going to do just that. So A times C is equal to B times C minus 1. Oops. My goal is to solve for C, and right now I do see a C on both sides. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to distribute that B on the right. So this is going to be B, C minus B equaling A, C. I st still have C terms on both sides. So I want to get them on one side and everything else on the other. So for me, what my brain is doing is it's subtracting this B, C from the right and moving it to the left. However, you know that you could subtract the AC from the left and move it to, over to the right and then just add that B to the left. So you could have AC minus BC equaling negative B, or you could have a positive B equaling BC minus AC. And you'll notice these are the same exact thing. There's um, no real difference here. Um, I'll go ahead and solve both of them just to show you though. So my goal is to get C by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out the C, leaving me with A minus, oops, B equaling negative B. So dividing, I get negative B over A minus B. So that's one of my answers, or that is the answer. I'll show you another way of writing that. B is equal to C times B minus A. So B over B minus A is equal to C. These are the same exact thing. Notice the only difference is kind of our signs. That negative at the top over here, if that negative B was at the top, if I move that negative B to the bottom, it really would be negative times A minus B, which you know is negative A plus B, which is the same thing as B minus A, which is over here. So hopefully you guys are okay with seeing that. So obviously both of these answers are equally correct. There's no one better one over the other. So it's whatever you kind of um, feel more comfortable doing. And then the last two examples, like I said, um, just looking at them, it would be best in my opinion to use, um, what color do we want to do? Uh, we'll do orange. Um, it would be best to use our least common denominator. So in example four, we're solving for R. And so if I want to focus on using the least common denominator method, I notice that my denominators are R, R squared, and R squared. Well, these two already have the same denominator. 
So what you could do if you wanted to is you could subtract this second term over to the right hand side, combine them because they have the same denominator, and then you would just have one fraction equaling another and you could cross multiply. You're more than welcome to do that. But like I said, we haven't done LCD yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And for this problem, my LCD is gonna be that R squared. The only thing I need to do is multiply this first fraction by R, oh, the R over R to make it s r over r squared plus t over r squared equals t plus 2 over r squared. Now every single term has the same denominator. And so if you remember when solving, we said that method of LCD, um, even though it might take a lot of work in the beginning, once we get it to this point, it's actually very, very nice because all those denominators are the same. Now I can just focus on the numerators and keep those signs. So really I'm just solving SR plus T equals T plus two. And if my goal is to solve for R, all I need to do is subtract T from both sides. Well, T minus T is zero, so SR is equal to two. Um, solving for R, I divide by S, so R is equal to two divided by S, final answer. Okay, now I haven't mentioned this um, yet, but Obviously, I would hope that you would know that your exclusions would be S cannot be zero because it's in the denominator here, but also R cannot be zero because it's in the denominator up here. Um, we are not, uh, we speaking like the Outdoor 2 teachers, we're not really that, um, we're not going to be that particular with your exclusions for solving literal equations. When you're solving an actual equation, you definitely need to list out your um, exclusions or if you're adding or subtracting or multiplying and dividing, you absolutely have to list out those exclusions. But for these literal equations, we're more worried about the process of you solving um, than the numerical values, if that makes sense. So this is something you should know, but um, I'm not going to expect that you list it for literal equations. And then the last problem, again, another um, LCD method. We have to um, keep our um, keep in mind that these variables of R1, R2, R3, and R are all completely different. It would be like me saying 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C equals 1 over D. Okay, they are all different and unique. Um, so this one is gonna get a little weird because we're gonna have R's all over the place. But the great news is that our numerators are actually very, very easy to work with. They're all one. So think about those denominators, right? None of them are the same. None of them have anything in common. So that means our common denominator is going to be that R, R1, R2, R3. All of them multiply together. So thinking about using the, the method of LCD, I'm going to multiply each fraction by what it's missing, right? So that first fraction really needs the R, the R2, and the R3. It already has the R1. Obviously, we know that this is over itself, okay? The reason why I'm not gonna write this out for every single one is one space. But two, we need to focus on that method of LCD because once every single part of this problem has the same denominator, remember we can just focus on the numerator. So in my mind right now, I'm just focusing on the numerator. So that first new numerator, and I'm going to be switching colors here so we can kind of keep it straight. That first new numerator, let me keep it orange then, will be R, R2, R3. Because remember, what is it being multiplied by? one every single time. This is wonderful. I don't have to worry about foiling or distributing or anything like that. All of this is being multiplied by one. So of course it stays the same. Then we add the next problem, the next fraction. Well, that next fraction would need the R, the R1, and the R3 because it already had the R2. Then the third fraction would need the R, the R1, and the R2 because it already had the R3. And then of course that would equal the last fraction which needs um, 
it already has the R, so it needs the R1, R2, and R3. And so remember, mathematically what we're doing is we're multiplying this to the numerator and the denominator, but when I multiply those denominators out, I'm getting that common denominator every single time. So it's really like over the common denominator, over the common denominator, over the common denominator, over the common denominator. Well, we know that method just means we get to focus on the numerators now. So it's exactly what I just did, okay? It's just trying to save us some steps, save us some room, save us some headache, all right? Now we get to the actual meat and the potatoes of the actual problem, right? Solving this for R. We're solving this for R, not R1, not R2, not R3, just plain old R. So we need to see which terms have the R in it. This one, this one, and this one. The last term in blue actually doesn't have it at all. So this is perfect. Every single term that has the R is on the left and every term that doesn't have the R is on the right. This is kind of what we want because now we can factor out that R and it's gonna leave us with R2, R3 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R2. And then that's still equal to the R1, R2, R3. Now, how do we solve for the R? Well, we divide all of this by the part that we don't want, which is this right here. And I'm gonna use my little notability cheating. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that. I love this, that's so cool. Cause then it just goes bye-bye. Oops, it goes bye-bye. And then I can also do the same thing over here. Oops, how did I do that? That, yeah, love it, love it. So that makes our final answer R equals R1, R2, R3 over R2, R3 plus R1, R3 plus R1, R2, final answer. Pretty cool, huh? Probably think, no, this is not cool. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Um, if you were listing exclusions, obviously R could not be zero, R1 could not be zero, R2 could not be zero, and R3 could not be zero. But like I said, we're not concerned about that for these literal, um, just for the actual solving and adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing. So, all right, guys, go practice. Um, talk to you later.